Hello and welcome to episode 3 in the series on GPU programming. In this episode, we are going to create a simple neural network for recognizing handwritten digits using just CUDA and the knowledge that we gained from previous episodes in the series. The data that we will be using for training our neural net will be the MNIST dataset. It contains great scaled images of handwritten digits of size 28 by 28 pixels. And the neural network architecture that we'll use will be a multi-layer perceptron, where the first layer will be the input layer, getting 784 pixel values of our image. It will have two hidden layers, one of size 300 and one of size 100. And an output layer with 10 neurons corresponding to digits from 0 to 9. As I've mentioned in the introduction to the series, I'm going to do some explanations on how neural networks work, but it will not be a very detailed one. So for those that are unfamiliar with neural networks at all, i leave a link in the description to the series from Free Blue and Brown where he goes in depth on this exact problem. I also have to mention that you should be able to code all of the functionality yourself. And I highly encourage you to try to pause the video every time a new concept comes up and try to come up with a solution on your own. Another note would be that this episode will not introduce any new concept in the realm of GPU programming. It's meant to reinforce what we've learned so far. The first kernel that we will be writing is the forward pass for our neural network layer. To calculate the output of a single neuron, we need to take the first input and multiply it with a corresponding weight. We then do that for every other input and sum the results together adding a single bias term at the end. You might have noticed that the operation is just a dot product between the inputs and the weights, so we can express it like this. Going even further, we can stack the weights into a matrix and biases to a vector to get an equation for the output of every neuron, dot just one. And usually, we calculate our output for a batch of inputs, so we can stack our inputs in a matrix as well. And the code that we'll use for this will be similar to our matrix multiplication code from the previous episode. This time, the matrix will not be square, so we need to take three parameters for the shapes of our matrices. Like in the matrix multiplication code, each thread produces one output element, we need to check the boundary conditions before doing any reads or writes. Then, we initialize our output to the corresponding bias, and we iterate over the weights and inputs and calculate the dot product. In order for our neural network to work, our layers require a nonlinear activation function. Otherwise, they would just simply collapse to a one big linear layer. And the activation that we will be using is the ReLU function. It is a very simple concept. It returns 0 if x is lesser than 0 and x otherwise. This is what it looks like when we graph it. Now it is time to write the code. Again, each thread calculates one element in the output matrix. We need to perform a boundary check. And then we set our output to the activation if it was greater than zero and zero otherwise. We will use the ReLU activation function for every layer in our network, except for the last one. What we want our last layer to do is to output the probability of an image representing each number from zero to 9. Right now, our layer would output just numbers that we would have to interpret ourselves. 
we need to have some function that will take in our final layer's output and return a probability distribution. We can achieve this result by using a softmax function as our final activation. Although there is one caveat. Since it uses an exponential function that grows, well, exponentially, if our input vector will contain multiple positive values, it can overflow, as we will add a lot of big numbers together in our divisor. We can mitigate this by subtracting the maximum of our vector from the exponent. That way, the powers will always be negative and our values will remain in the range of 0 to 1. This is the code for the kernel that will implement our softmax function. We can see a familiar pattern for calculating one output element in each thread and performing a boundary check. We then initialize our max value in the input vector to the first element of that vector and iterate over the rest of the values to find the maximum. Then we iterate over the values again, calculating the divisor. And finally, we calculate the probability for our element and store it in the output array. The final component of our neural network would be the loss function. You can think of the loss function as a measure of how bad our neural network is performing. The higher the loss function, the worse is the result of our output. We will use a cross-entropy loss function for our neural network. It takes two vectors as the input, the vector of real probabilities for each class, and the vector of predictions of our neural network. It then iterates over all labels, so in our case, the numbers from 0 to 9, and calculates the cross-entropy between the truth and our prediction. Note that our real probabilities will have one entry that is equal to 1, indicating the real number, and the rest of the vector will be all zeros. So our loss will collapse to just being the negative logarithm of the predicted probability for our true label. When we graph it, we can see that it's getting higher the lower our predicted probability is for the real number, and it's zero when the network has correctly guessed the label. If you want some more intuition on where this loss function comes from, I invite you to watch my series on information theory. Without further ado, let's write the kernel for our loss. This time, we will reduce our input size to one dimension, so we only operate on the x-axis in our kernel grid. It should come as no surprise that we need to do our boundary check, and we iterate over each number and calculate its contribution to our loss. This part could have been parallelized even further, but that would require introducing atomic operations and I intend to keep my promise of not introducing anything new in this episode. One thing to note is the max function in the logarithm. We do the max of a very small number and our prediction for numerical stability, because the log function is undefined for zero. In the end, we save our result in the output vector. There is one last kernel that I want to mention. Our weights have to actually be initialized to some random value. We can also do that on the GPU using the code on the screen. It's pretty straightforward, so I won't go into it in detail. One thing that might be confusing is the use of the square root function. This is just he initialization. I won't go over it as it's outside of the scope of the series but I leave a link in the description for those that want to read more on the subject. This will be the end for this episode. In the next one, 
we are going to implement the backward pass and backpropagate our error to actually teach our neural network to predict the correct digit. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Also, please leave your feedback in the comments. It helps me shape the future direction of the series. See you in the next episode. Bye.